You, we are starting with a warning tonight, not only from the FBI, but also from an upstate family about sextortion blackmail cases on the rise. This family has seen it firsthand how horrible things can end. Seven News reporter Melanie Palmer is here in the studio now to explain what this family's told her about the toll it's taken. This is a story you'll see only on seven. Melanie. Jared Johns has been gone for almost four years. One of the men his family says contributed to his death was sentenced in a Greenville County courtroom Tuesday. But for Johns's family, the fight for justice is far from over. There isn't a day that goes by when these two don't think about their son, Jared Johns. It's a devastation that you can't, you can't put it into words. A veteran and loving father, but his life was cut short by what investigators have called a sextortion blackmail scheme. Lord knows if I had heard of it, I would have warned him. But the first time I ever heard of it was when this happened to Jared. Investigators say it started in 2018 with two prisoners in the Lee Correctional Institution who got access to contraband phones. Officers said the phones were used to text Johns, pretending to be parents of a soon-to-be 18-year-old girl, asking for over $1,000 or else, threatening to go to the police, making Johns believe he committed a crime when he didn't. Once I saw that $1,189, I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. I just stopped right there and I said, this is a scam. John's his parents told 7 News he suffered from PTSD and these threats were the tipping point. He died by suicide on September 11th of 2018. Rather than the person online asking for additional photos, they be began to ask for actually a ransom. The FBI has been tracking these kind of sextortion cases for years. They're essentially digital blackmail. However, they're starting to see a major uptick in reports. Unfortunately, traditional crime that we've seen over the past few years, but we've seen a huge increase in it recently. And that's why for John's parents, talking about what happened is so important. Stuff that just comes up and it just automatically makes me think of Jared. They can't bring their son back, but they say they can keep his memory alive. When this all came out, I began to get so many calls about if we hadn't seen your son's story, then you know, my nephew had this going on and we were able to help him and a, a little guy from Florida, he had actually already bought the gun and he said. Now the second prisoner in this case was convicted of the crime Tuesday. John Dobbins was sentenced to 10 years behind bars with the last three slated for parole. In Greenville, Melanie Palmer, 7 News.